To the left hand side for Vieira, who will play it through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal. Gabriel Jesus to finish it off. Oh, and what a way to do it! Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal. He's back, and he's back with a bang. Into the penalty area it goes. Gabriel header, and it's into the back of the net. Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna. The Daily Arsenal Podcast with me, Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast with me, your host, Harry Simeon. Hope everybody is good. Hope everybody is well. As you can see, I'm still in Germany. I'm in my hotel room in Dusseldorf. I'll be heading off on Wednesday to Dortmund, where England take on the Netherlands. I'll tell you what, there's so many England fans out here. Um, I've been surprised, actually, by how many have made the trip. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised. I'm not someone that's followed England around a lot in the past, so I wouldn't really know if this is the norm. But in terms of the numbers, just walking around Dusseldorf City Centre, there's so many England fans here ready to get behind the team on the beers, as you'd expect, generally speaking, uh, but of course here to support the team. I'm expecting a massive influx of Dutch fans as well, though, over the next two days because Dusseldorf isn't a million miles away from Dortmund. Um, it's about 40 minutes or so on the train and a lot of people will be flying into Dusseldorf or staying here because I'm sure it will be cheaper around this game than, of course, uh, staying in Dortmund where the game is actually taking place. But yeah, really looking forward to getting to that one on Wednesday. But let's park the Euro 2024 chat for now. Let's talk Arsenal, which is what you're all here for. And we're going to begin by talking Nuno Tavares. Now, of course, he returns to Arsenal after having gone out on loan for a couple of seasons now. Not really impressed, if we're being honest. He seemed to have good spells at each of his loan spells, but never managed to kind of sustain that level of performance and do enough for any of those clubs really to want to seriously consider buying him. We are hearing now that the Italian side, uh, Rome-based giants, Lazio, are interested in signing Nuno Tavares. Now, Arsenal are said to be looking for around about £10 million, which is more than what Arsenal paid to bring him to Arsenal from Benfica uh, all those years ago. I would argue that Nuno Tavares' stock has dropped rather than risen. And so I think to expect to get more than what we paid for him is probably a little bit fanciful. I know there'll be people in the comments saying, Harry, stop trying to flog all our players for dirt cheap. I always get it. I'm just realistic about what I think these players are worth in today's market. The market has changed um, there was a massive sort of increase in terms of what people were paying for players. And all of a sudden that seems to have hit a little bit of a brick wall just in terms of how PSRs come in and complicated matters for a lot of clubs. We're talking about an Italian club here and Italian clubs notoriously do not spend a lot of money. Um, the league doesn't allow them to. Their financial structures and models don't allow them to spend anywhere near what Premier League clubs do. So the minute that you're selling someone abroad, you have to take a hit on the price as far as I'm concerned. Lazio interested, but is the 10 million euro asking price going to be too much? I suspect it will be. I think this is going to be a classic case of club wants to buy Arsenal player, knows that Arsenal aren't going to budge in the early stages of the window, but if they really want him, they stay interested, they keep across the situation, they keep talking to the player, they try and get that side of things wrapped up, and come the end of the window, they'll make a low ball offer, I would imagine, and they'll try and get him in. Now, he might not end up at Lazio, but Lazio are the latest club being linked with a move for the Portuguese Wing back. I, I almost feel wrong calling him a fullback because of how bad he is defensively. Uh, but yeah, Nuno Tavares, there is interest in him from Italy. Fulham are expected to make a move for Emil Smith Rowe. He's been reported as being a key target for the Cottagers for quite some time now. Now, from what we're hearing, uh, it seems like Emil Smith Rowe is interested in staying at Arsenal and fighting for his place. He wants to give it one more season, he wants to give it one more go. He wants to be in that Arsenal environment. But Arsenal um, could well 
look to move Emil Smith Rowe on. We've talked a lot about the need to consider selling some of these players, players that are on the peripheries, players that I don't really believe Mikel Arteta is that big into in terms of how he thinks they can feature and how important they can be moving forward. Arsenal are looking for around about £30 million plus for Emil Smith-Rowe. If Fulham came in with that kind of offer, I think Arsenal would accept it. Now, the question is, would Emil Smith-Rowe want the move? Would he take the move? Is that where he sees his future? And the answer to that is, I don't really know. As I say, from reading bits and pieces this morning, the general consensus appears to be that Emil Smith-Rowe is quite happy to stay at Arsenal for one more year and give it a good go. But is that the same position that Arsenal hold? I would guess that if the right money were on the table, and by right money, I'm talking £30 million plus, I think Arsenal would consider moving him on. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Would you like to see Emil Smith-Rowe stay and fight for his place? Or do you think this is a real opportunity for Arsenal to generate some revenue that they can then go and reinvest in the transfer market in perhaps more uh, important positions based on, on what we're looking for and what we need? Ever since we've been linked with Ricardo Calafiori, there's been a lot of talk about Jakub Kivior and a potential departure for him. We know that Juve are interested. We know that Milan have been long-term admirers, but it seems that Inter have come into the equation as well. They are also looking at the Polish international. However, what I can tell you from speaking uh, to my colleague uh, who is right across Italian football um, is that none of these clubs have any intention of buying Jakub Kivior for 15 plus million pounds which is what Arsenal would probably be looking for all of these clubs interested the the three I've just named Juve, Inter and Milan would all want to take Jakub Kivior on loan Arsenal are working to try and get some kind of obligation to buy in that loan deal but that's not something that I'd imagine Juve, Inter or Milan would be keen on I think they're looking to get a good deal. I think they're trying to play on the fact that perhaps watching Ricardo Calafiori come in, um, you know, and that's not wrapped up just yet. You know, we're still waiting to hear further details on that. We know that the talks were scheduled to continue this week. But just looking at Calafiori coming in, Kivio might be a bit agitated. You know, he might be asking, what does that mean for me? He might be questioning his role in this squad. And if you can get the player and convince him that a move to your place is the right thing and you can turn his head essentially and you know he's been in Italian football before he knows what Juve, Inter and Milan are all about if they can convince him then I think that that goes some way in doing the deal now Arsenal don't have to accept anything Jakob Kivior is under contract Arsenal can do what they want and will only let him go if they feel that the money is right. But um, I do think that this is another one that towards the end of the window, particularly if we wrap up the Calafiori deal, you could see Arsenal allowing to happen. However, they'll probably find a way, or you'd hope they'd find a way of getting that obligation to buy clause in uh, just to protect ourselves um, and make sure that we get some sort of um, reinvestment or, or, or some sort of return, I should say, on Jakob Kivior, who we paid nearly £20 million for, but hasn't really made his mark. He's come in and out of the side and, you know, at times he played left back last season and looked OK. I think we all know he's a centre back. And, you know, over time he's been, at least in Mikel Arteta's eyes, a hybrid between a left centre back and a left back. Well, that is exactly what Ricardo Calafiori is. So if we're bringing him in, what does that mean for Jakob Kivior? Do you keep him and make sure that you've got lots of options within the squad but then the question is, is the player satisfied with that? If he's not and his head is turned, then you might as well get some money in for him. Reports out of Spain, and I'd take these with a pinch of salt at the moment, are claiming that Arsenal have offered €35 million Euros and Eddie Enquetia to Barcelona for Rafinha. I always say when it comes to these things, if it doesn't make sense, it probably isn't true. And that's exactly how I feel about this story. First of all, we know that Rafinha has been a long-term target. We know that Arsenal were interested in him a couple of summers ago. We weren't able to get that deal done. He ended up joining Barcelona, which was always his preference from what we were led to believe. Chelsea were in the mix at that point as well. Um, Joan Laporta has been talking today about Barcelona's interest in Nico Williams. He didn't say that they're going to get him or that there's anything in the pipeline there necessarily but he did say that it is something that they can do financially which 
kind of puts to bed the myth that Barcelona are desperate for money and therefore would consider something like this for one of their better players. Um, but it could be Joan Laporta just playing the political game that he does and has done at the top of that football club for so many years. This is his, what, second or third stint uh, in as the president of the club. So just because Joan Laporta says it, it doesn't mean that it's uh, the gospel truth. But as I say, it is a report coming out of Spain. There is suggestions that Arsenal are interested in Rafinha again, that the Gunners would give Barcelona 35 million euros and Eddie Nketiah uh, to get that deal done. First of all, the Barca want Nketiah. Second of all, does Nketiah want Barca? Well, there's worse places he could land, that's for sure. But as I say, if it doesn't make sense, it probably isn't true. And that's exactly my feeling and sentiment around that one. It's been confirmed that Mika Biereth is joining Sturm Graz for £4 million. Um, good move for him. It's a move that worked out for him in terms of it as a loan move originally. And you can understand why Sturm Graz were desperate to bring him in. He, he really had a good positive impact there. And it's an opportunity for him to be the main man at a club that he obviously knows and obviously um, has uh, an affiliation with having spent some time there. He clearly likes it there. Otherwise, he wouldn't be open to this. Four million pounds is decent money. I've seen some people online saying, how comes Chelsea sell youth players for this amount? And how comes Liverpool sold? This is the classic one that they always go back to. Dominic Solanke for all that money, etc., etc. Like I always hear that and it drives me up the bloody wall. Mika Biereth. How much did you think you were going to get for him? Jesus Christ, four million pounds is not an awful lot of money. But considering that he's made zero impact at Arsenal and his impact has come during loan spells at sides that play a much lower standard of football, then to think that you were going to get like major money for him is wrong. And again, it comes back to what I was saying earlier on. If you're selling him abroad, you got to factor in the financials of the club that are buying him because they can't do what they can't do. And Sturm Graz will have looked at Mika Biereth. They were worried from what we were reading that somebody else was going to come in for him. Obviously, nobody has. He's made his mind up. He's going there. And £4 million as a fee is pretty decent, I would say. Now, on to our main story. Now, this one took me by surprise last night when I sat down to have my dinner. I got a notification on my phone. The Ornacle had posted on X. And he said that Arsenal are interested in Wolves goalkeeper Dan Bentley. Who? <laughs> and I don't mean that disrespectfully. Like, it's just this is the last person I would have put on my list of potential buys for Arsenal this summer. Now, we knew that the goalkeeping situation was one that probably needed a bit of work, okay? Because I think a lot of us still feel like there's a possibility that Aaron Ramsdale will leave between now and the end of the window. We know that Carl Hines signed a new contract recently, which is obviously positive news. However, the most uh, likely uh, scenario for him, based on what I've heard from Charles Watts and Tom Canton, etc., etc., is that he will be going out on loan. Then Arsenal have an issue, don't they, in the third choice goalkeeping position. And that's where probably Dan Bentley comes in. But if Arsenal do sell Aaron Ramsdale, I'd argue that they'd need to bring another goalkeeper in on top of Dan Bentley to make sure that we still have a good enough standard of goalkeeper in the event that something happens to David Raya. This lad was at Arsenal many, many years ago. Um, he played uh, during, I think it might have been the 09-010 season, uh, as an under-18, um, he is someone that Wolves fans will tell you is is pretty handy. He's someone that uh, a few of you have tweeted me about. Uh, fans of South End, people that watched him at previous clubs have all said, look, very, very decent goalkeeper. But is he a, a top Premier League club level goalkeeper? The, the, the answer is probably no. However, if he's coming in as a third choice then okay, like he's played a few games. I think he's played seven or eight games in the Premier League for Wolverhampton Wanderers. It isn't a great deal, but he's looked okay in those games. As a third choice, I'm fine with it. Look, I, I know that I saw loads of people online yesterday going like, what, what the hell is this? What are we doing? This is mad. Why are we going after this guy? There's so many people out there and you're going after Dan Bentley. Um, and, and I'm very much of the opinion here that you can't really be 
massively positive about this like I've heard some people try and put a real positive spin on it well he's exactly what Arsenal need as a third choice goalkeeper well you don't know that because we haven't seen enough of him so I think to say he's exactly what we need is wrong because it's based on um, trying to be optimistic more than facts or, or what you've seen in a lot of people's cases anyway I appreciate there are some of you out there that would have seen him play at his previous clubs a lot more than I would but also, you can't say it's a massive negative either. So you kind of just need to keep the neutral ground on this one. Big positive? No, because nobody knows enough about him and he certainly doesn't have a glamorous enough CV for us to be really excited about this signing. But negative? No, because if he's coming in as a third choice, it is what it is. How good is your third choice goalkeeper going to be given the limited game time they're going to get? Look how limited Aaron Ramsdale's minutes were last season. Imagine what they would look like for someone like Dan Bentley, barring an injury to a key player. So I'm not positive about it. I'm not negative about it either. I'm very much at the point with a lot of these signings, particularly these types of ones, the gap fillers, the, the stop gaps. I just look at Arteta, Edu and Arsenal and I just think you've got so much right over the last few years. If this is what you think is the right thing, just go out there and do it and we'll back it and we'll support it and we'll support the player as we do every player that pulls on the red and white of the Arsenal or the goalkeeper would probably wear some luminous green colour or something. But you know where I'm going with that. Um, so yeah, that came out of the blue, I've got to say. Um, Arsenal... Uh, are preparing to make an approach apparently and Wolves are potentially um, going to consider accepting it if it brings in money that they can then reinvest in the squad so there seems a willingness on both sides to do this deal I'm sure Dan Bentley would jump at the chance to join Arsenal return to Arsenal I should say the club where he featured as an under 18 uh, all those years ago He'd have come full circle. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see if and how this one develops. As I say, not jumping up and down about it, certainly not angry about it either. It's one that we just need to watch and see how it plays out. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, he, he's been at a lot of clubs. He's he's obviously played Premier League football, which automatically puts him ahead of someone like Carl Hine, in my opinion, who hasn't played Premier League football, right? So you know, if you're talking about a third choice goalkeeper, then he does in some way represent some sort of upgrade. Um, and that's the thing that you kind of have to keep in mind here. But equally, is it the most um, inspiring of stories? The fact that we've been linked with Dan Bentley? No, it's not. And so let's not pretend that it is. Um, let's just deal with it for what it is, which is a stopgap signing, a squad filling signing, homegrown as well um, obviously uh, and that will probably be something that Arsenal are taking into consideration as well when trying to fill that third goalkeeping position I really do believe it will be the third goalkeeping position like if Ramsdale does leave I think Arsenal definitely need to go into the market and bring in another goalkeeper let me know your thoughts on all of the stories we've discussed. Just a quick recap. Tavares, um, Lazio are interested in him, but Arsenal's 10 million euro asking price might be too much for them. Fulham are expected to come in for Emile Smith-Rowe. They've made him a priority target this summer, according to reports. Jakub Kivior is now attracting interest from Inter rather than just their Milan rivals and Juve, who had been previously credited with interest. Reports out of Spain say that Arsenal are after Rafinha again and that they'd be willing to pay €35 million Euros and hand over Eddie and Ketia to get that deal done. I don't see that happening somehow. Uh, Mika Biris' move to Sturm Graz has been completed, um, or at least confirmed by him, um, on social media uh, at the time of recording this and Arsenal are interested in the Wolves goalkeeper Dan Bentley let me know your thoughts on all the stories in the comments section below subscribe to the Chronicles of Aguna if you haven't done so already leave us a review if you're listening on audio leave us a comment and a like if you're watching us on YouTube and I will see you all on Tuesday with the next one until then take care of yourselves have a great day goodbye